I want to share a, a tweet, a quote from a friend of mine named Jamie Kilstein, who's a comedian that does work. And I saw it today when I woke up and checked the interwebs and looked at my Facebook. And he said, if you've ever bashed a union, then you should be at work today. That was his quote, you know. So uh, I feel like he I captured Labor Day in one sentence there in 140 characters. Uh, we like Jamie. So uh, this poem is kind of about that, but it's many more words. And uh, it's called Bread and Roses. And this is the poem, I, I like to say that uh, I read this poem, and then uh, John Hendry and I have been inseparable ever since. This is the poem that came together around. And he asked me to write it a couple years ago for the New Mexico Federation of Labor State Conference. And uh, the whole process for me in writing is like, I have to do homework to figure out what I feel about the issue, and then I also have to like dig into my own personal story, because without that, it's not poetry. It has to connect to me. So I did a little bit of both, and I uh, came up with this piece that I'm happy to share with you today. Um, and it's a little bit sad that this is the last stop on our tour. Not because of you, because you guys are beautiful and awesome, you know. But uh, it's kind of like summer camp. Like, we've been hanging out for three days, and now we all have to go back to our other lives, so. <sighs> okay. Bread and Roses. In the year of our Constitution, 1787, our country was already over 150 years into the practice of creating free and cheap laborers for life. And in 1786, printers in our then capital of Philadelphia conducted the first successful strike for increased wages. Over 100 years later, in 1902, a former dressmaker and school teacher known simply as Mother Jones would be called the most dangerous woman in America. And over 100 years to now, we still have a long way to go in a country that democratically elects leaders who genuinely believe that underpaid teachers and their unions are the biggest threat to our future. Bread and Roses. The very first unions in America were brought here by boats, broken by back, whip, rape, and rope. Now, lies in a boogeyman economy do the trick. The only thing scarier than labor, the only thing scarier than work is losing it. Even the House and Senate can come together around house and field, divide and conquer, give us power but not position, give us personnel but not privilege, give us responsibility but not rights or profits or shares. Give us a sniff of American exceptionalism, get us drunk off of upward mobility, put us behind the wheel of an American dream until we launch ourselves into a windshield that will not let us eject or escape this cabin. I come from a long line of laborers, a lineage of long black men who nowadays only unionize for sports, who are either rich enough to be locked out or poor enough to be locked in, but back then were Memphis enough to get Dr. King to detour towards death in the name of fairness. Air Jordan-esque working conditions, laceless wages, boots that were begging for straps. We are colonial Philadelphia, 1806ers, journeymen convicted of criminal conspiracy. We are New York, 1829, working men's party, when 60 hours a six-day work week was radical. Every morning, we wake up nights of labor to whistles of work and whispers of worse. Integrated women and our own Negro spirituals of sorts hold the forts. At a time when mining companies would send dynamite husbands home in a bucket and mothers like Jones who lived in homes rented from the employer fed family with currency only good at the company store had three days to replace Papa with one of her sons so production doesn't suffer no matter how young he was, no matter how much she does. We are immigrants, Molly's 1877, pushed too far. We are children, worked too hard. The reason Mary Harris marched from the city of brotherly love to Teddy Roosevelt's front porch. We found our own Congress of industrial organizations to replace the one that had forsaken us. We are sitting down strikes in the buildings that they value with our bodies that they do not. We are wage equity and wage war. We are ripped off scabs that will not bandage their cuts after we strike. Only band together our blood and heal. We are still leaping from ninth floor windows at the triangle waste 
Company. We are Clara Lenlick. We are Dolores Carta. We are Cesar Chavez. We are Samuel Gompers. We are Gabriel Prosser. We are Lucy Gonzalez Parsons. And we are Rosie the Riveter. We are the hand on the Bible denying we're socialists. We are the witches of Taft Hartley. We are holy Jerry Falwell, salt of the earth, who forever put love of God before love of greed. You said labor unions should study and read the Bible instead of asking for more money. But we are pickers who reap and sow and read. So Rock 34, 22, to take away a neighbor's living is to murder him. To deprive an employee of his wage is to shed blood. We are teamsters and longshoremen. And just like you, Jerry, we ain't perfect. Proverbs 14, 31, he who oppresses a poor man insults his maker. We are closed factories and empty mouths, auto, textiles, and steel. We are the meek who inherit ourselves. We are the lamb, the sacrifice, and the carpenter that said, the worker deserves his wages. Luke 10, 7. We are the people who power dreams and profits and are for granted and are forgotten. We are the people who brought you the weekend. We are coming home empty-handed. We are back pockets of college tuition. We are stuck between the mattresses of future Christmases. We are smiles on our children's faces. And sometimes, even though we are faceless, we are food in the fridge. We are hero and heroine. We are coming back, coming home every night in one piece. Please, please believe that we are all hard work and belief. We are about 505, 5.30, 6.15. We are bread and roses for dinner. Oh.